Hey, thank you so much for checking out today's video. I'm Pastor Matt, this is Pastor Adrian, and we pray this message blesses you and encourages you all throughout your week. Absolutely. For any more information on how to be praying with us or to become a part of our community or to give, please head on over to takeovergera.com. Oh man. All right, well make your way in, guys. Make your way in, get ready to stand up. We are gonna get into worship. Who's ready to worship the Lord this morning? Come on. Well, hey, real quick, we got a little church vision for you. Who's ready for church vision? Come on, somebody. All right. Yo, as you know, follow us on social media, YouTube, Spotify, all of that. Instagram. The things that children are doing these days that they tell me about, it's necessary. They tell me it's super necessary. Somebody say super necessary. Super necessary. That way you don't miss a thing that's going on. Next up, we have got... Takeover turns four. Come on. That is next Sunday. It is going to be a party. Lori with the glory. She's got plans for the cafe, all sorts of good stuff. You want to be here. I want to be here. I'm going to be here. You should be here. And we should be here together, right? And then you should bring some friends, right? And like, that's just how life should be. Yay. So anyways, Takeover turns four. It's going to be a party. I can't wait. I am super pumped. So make sure you're here. Next up is we have got the takeovers. Come on, somebody. This is coming up. Let me make sure I got my day right. Friday, March 25th. So the takeovers are like our version yearly of uh, the Grammys, of the Oscars. We dress up to the nines and we celebrate our serve crew. Now, the cool thing about this is if you've already been serving, you got an invite. And you need to RSVP to that on the Facebooks. If you want to start serving and get like four weeks of servitude underneath your belt and get a really funny uh, award where we get to make fun of you for just getting in before the lock, then sign up to serve because we could use you and we would love to build church alongside you. Does that sound good? And there's a taco bar, okay? It's going to be awesome. And we are dressing to the nines. It is going to be awesome. It's going to be a great night. March 25, that is a Friday. We're going to turn up like the Lord just showed up. Amen? All right. Fantastic. And then after service, always, there is prayer in the back during the last song. At the end of service, if you need anything, right back there. I just got healed before service. I had some, like, weird, like, stomach pain going on right here. And no joke, got three brothers, laid some hands, feeling like a new man. Sound good? Come on, somebody. All right. Would you guys stand up? We're going to get ready to worship. John 11:40 says this. Didn't I tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Did I not tell you that if you just simply believed, simply listened to me, simply took me, Jesus, at my word, that you would not see the glory of God? Friends, that's the kind of God that we serve. That's the kind of God that says, take me at my word and you will see things that this world can't explain. You will see things that your mind cannot connect the dots between, but the glory of the Lord will show up, but the glory of the Lord will heal, but the glory of the Lord will come and he will radically impact and change your life forever. Does that not sound like the God you want to worship? That what we're going to do right now is we are going to unite underneath one word and it is believe. And we are going to see the glory of God rule and reign in these next few moments. Does that sound good? Come on. Is there any Christians that believe in the house this morning? Then we're going to pray and we're going to worship. Father God, come and have your way. Lord, we're not here for another program. We're not here for another service. Father, we are not here for some religious ideals. We are not here for a religious check mark. We are here for a relationship. We are here for an encounter. We are here, God, to come into your presence to spend time with our favorite person, Lord Jesus. So Holy Spirit, come and have your way. Every other spirit, you get the hell out. Holy Spirit, come, rule and reign in this place. In Jesus' mighty name of faith, filled church set. Amen, let's worship.
so true but it is only as true as you are to agree with the, the, the ability of God through you the, the the willingness and the surrender for him to move in those ways because you can sit here and you can pray like it's a song you're like oh yeah this song bangs it does it sure does but you there's a city here there's a people here there's people that aren't here that are so hurt and so broken and and, and God is looking down at us and just saying like I, I pray that you guys I pray that these people in these white chairs they would just agree with the truth that I have written down because there's so many people that are far there's so many people that are hurt there's so many people that are broken and he gave his Holy Spirit to us so that we can agree with this so that we can walk with it with him and, 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 and fully embody the truth so I just I just Lord I pray that you would just come into each one of our hearts and our minds right now in this moment as we as we rehash this truth again Lord whatever distractions when our are we're in our head before we just call them out in the name of Jesus you have no place there's something that is way too true to ignore and I pray Lord as we speak it out and speak, we proclaim it in truth Lord you, you you created us in your image you love us so much you've given us your authority you give us power of word and Lord the words that we want to say are all things that just build up your kingdom and build up your church so Lord be with every single one of us let us pray this and say this and sing this like we believe it and that we want to implement it like we believe that we can walk on water in Jesus name let's go through this again one more time believe every single word that you're saying think about what you're saying think about what the song is and know it and know that it's true Wherever you would call me And take me deeper than my feet could ever wander My faith would be made stronger In the presence of my Savior
grave that holds nobody And now that power lives in me There is another in the fire Lord, I don't know who's here that can just feel God's embrace right now. The Holy Spirit is here and he's with us and we're never alone. And Father, I just thank you. I thank you for that gift. Lord, we lift up those who are hesitating to lean into community, who are in need of community, God. I just pray, Lord, if that is you, if that is you feeling like you're just on the fence, this is your sign to just dive in. God wants you to be with his community. He wants you to feel loved. Father, we pray for prodigal sons and daughters. I just pray that as you work through your people, God, just planting your seeds, that you're just calling them home. You're calling them one step closer to you, Father. And I just pray that those people, those sons and daughters, they would come home. We pray for a revival and take over church. We pray for a revival in um, the community church in GR. Lord, I just pray for your your reign, your your kingdomship, your people, that they would just that they would just be on fire for you, God. We just we want to see you move. We want to see your will reign. We want to see 
people bowing to you, God, and nothing else in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for this brother or sister who has a date and um, they haven't been on a date in three years, Lord, so I pray that they would have courage, that they would have confidence, and that they would be led first and foremost by your spirit and your wisdom in Jesus' name. We pray for a sister whose car has just died. Um, God, that is just, it's, that's tough. And Father God, I just pray that you would come around this woman, that she would just have friends and family that would just be with her as this, this terrible news, you know? Um, we pray for her brother who starts a new job this week. So that's also a praise, like he has a job. But Father God, I just pray for your guidance, your wisdom as he enters this new season. We also pray for our dear sister, Alex, just for peace and for calm and for healing, Lord. We know that you know this dear, dear sister, Father, and I just pray that you would be with their family, that you would just give them solace, that you would just give them your peace, Lord. You say in your word that you leave and you give them your peace. You give us your peace, Lord. I just pray that it would rest on her, that you would rest on Alex, you would rest on her family, and in that house, Lord God, that healing would come right now in Jesus' name. We also pray for a sister um, healing from fatigue, Lord. She is just tired all the time, Lord. I just pray that you would empower her with your spirit, God, that you would just give her rest where she needs rest and that she would feel it immediately in Jesus' name. Father, we also lift up Amy's dad. She has a PET scan tomorrow, and we are just praying for clear scans, for wellness in his body. In Jesus' name, we know you can do it, and Lord, we are just praying and believing that you hold true to your promise. We pray this all in Jesus' mighty name. And with that, we have some praises. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So Lord, oh, we thank you for um, this sister. She's had so much quality time with family and friends over this weekend. Such a blessing to be with family and friends, right? <laughs> we also pray for a sister who just got a raise this week, praising God for faithfulness and provision, amen. We have Pastor Matt praising God for his amazing wife, Adrienne. You're the best. <laughs> We're also lifting up a praise for our very own Cole and Maya and their new engagement. Let's go! <laughs> Woo! Let's go! I cannot wait to see what God is going to do with you guys. Um, we have another praise for prayer ministry this week, and I got healed of mental disabilities and illness, so praise God for healing, right? Let's go! And lastly, we have a prayer from a dear sister. She has praying uh, prayers for the community night this Wednesday. Game night was much needed, and all those who were there know that. It was so fun, so exciting. Happy to be with our family. Um, prayer praises up for her brother's birthday on Friday and takeover becoming my family, my home, another place where I can feel like myself. And praises up for that, because that is just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, next, we have offering from Pastor Matt. Come on, come on, let's go. For Pastor Nikki, thank you. Oh, man. Yo, give it up for Kayla back here on the keys. Goodness. Oh, dude, you're, you, you, you hide your voice, but you, you, wow. I tell you what, Hillsong Who? That's what I was thinking during another in the fire. Hillsong Who? Uh, fantastic. Well, hey, this morning, yes, like Pastor Nicky said, I'm Pastor Matt. I'm not preaching today. And somebody's like, praise God. Uh, we'll be home in time for the Super Bowl, uh, which I was just informed was today. Brilliant. Anyways, fantastic. Hey, real quick, I'm going to give you an offering message, but uh, that's a QR code. All you got to do is shine your camera, and it takes you to the Internet. I don't know how it works. Praise God, right? But anyways, loads of ways that you can give this morning. But hey, I want to come at you out of the Bible this morning. And here's what the Lord Jesus says in Matt 6, 24. Y'all ready for the Word of God? Anybody love the Bible this morning? Anybody grateful that we don't have to navigate this life without it? Come on. No one can serve two masters. For you will hate one and love the other. 
you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. That is Matthew 6, 24. Now, I've got to be honest, that is, that's a heavy word because I think for so many of us, I love how Jesus just says this. He goes, no, 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 you don't understand. You don't understand. You cannot serve. It's not just God and money. You can't serve two masters. Jesus lays it out. Listen here, I'm king of the universe. Let me tell you. You try and love God and love something else equally, you will wind up hating one and dis- hating one, loving the other, despising one and worshiping the other. And, and if you look at our world today, how many of you know that's true? We live in a time and a place where it's not even just about money, but it's like, you know what? I love my identity. Well, you end up loving one and then despising the other. No, no, I want to be a Christian and I just want to be able to have sex with whomever I want, whenever I want, however I want, with how many ever I want, and love God. No, 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 you don't understand. You can't serve two masters because this leads one way, friends. You will love one and then you will despise the other. At some point in time, while living your life how you want to, you will come to a fork in the road, a divide, of which God is saying, come away with me over here. And while everything else that you try to serve is saying, come away with us over here. And Jesus makes it pretty clear because I can tell you this, above sex, above fashion, above comic books and other nerdy things that I love and pro wrestling above all these things I can tell you what drives me it's money I can tell you what I'd be enslaved to if I didn't have the Lord it's money I can tell you why I'd wake up I can tell you where I'd go I can tell you where I'd work I can tell you what I would do and I can tell you what I'd spend it on And it's not G-O-D, it is M-A-T. I got one T in my name. Pray for me. I get walked on a lot. Anyways. But friends, this is the Lord Jesus. He makes it pretty clear. And I love it because I love, I love giving. What I've noticed about the Lord is he loves to give to those he can trust with it. He loves to pour out blessings on people that he can trust with it. He loves to give to people who he knows are going to steward well, who are going to follow him well, who are going to be a voice for him well, who are going to live for him well. He will give you, it's not just money. There are so many things in this life that he begins to provide for those that he knows he can trust with it. I wasn't provided a spouse until he knew I could be trusted with it. And even then, my in-laws have questioned his decisions. I'm getting good at this comedy thing. But that's a word for all of us, no matter where we are today. Specifically in the area of giving, I want to encourage you. You want to be trusted with more. Ask yourself this morning, are you trusted with what you have now? Are you faithful with what you have now? We're in a series called Agreements right now. And Pastor Scott's about to come up and share a brilliant message on it. But I got to ask you, are you in an agreement in being a slave to money? Are you in agreement with loving God, pursuing God, Him above all else? Who runs your life? I think there's a brilliant quote that goes something along these lines. Don't serve money, but make money serve you. I think that's great, but I think it's JV. Because I think varsity would tell you, don't serve money and don't let money serve you, but serve God and watch what he'll do through you. I'm going to submit my money and I'm going to submit my life and I'm going to submit every single ounce of Matt McClure to the Lord of Jesus until there's nothing left of me and there's only him. Amen. So don't let... Don't let money serve you. You serve the Lord with your money and watch what he does. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray. I hope you give and you make this transition in your life because I'll tell you what, you're not going to regret it. Even if it's scary, you're not going to regret it. So Father, we ask right now, we ask you to invade every other area of our lives. And right now, God, we ask you to invade this one. 
right now, Father God, come and have your way. Just take it over, Jesus. Take it over. Have it. We're handing it over. You take it over. You take it further than we could. You do more with it than we can understand. You make something beautiful out of this dumb green currency that our world somehow decided we needed to barter with. And Father, you take it further than we could because we don't want to be a slave. Father, we desire to live free today. We make an agreement with freedom and the freedom giver. And we understand today, Father, that is you. So Holy Spirit, come. Lord, be Lord of our money. Lord of our hearts. And be with Pastor Scott as he gets ready to bring a brilliant message. Prepare our hearts to receive. In Jesus' mighty name, a faith-filled church said, Amen. Would you guys welcome Pastor Scott up here as he preaches the house down? I'll just use this one. Is that all right? Good morning. Is that a little higher? I don't know. It's all right. Sure. Sure. Um, before I get started, I just like this right here. And I, I don't know. I just want to shout. I want to shout out Matt and Adrian real quick. Um, I feel like I do that a lot, but whatever. I don't care. Um, I just want to shout them out real quick because, like that right there, he doesn't have to do that. Um, Adrian, when I was standing over here before I came up, she came. She came over and she is just like, "You want me to carry your stand up for you?" And I was like, "No, I I can carry it up. It's fine." But she's like, "Okay, I just want to serve you, dude." Nobody. People don't do that. I don't know if you guys realize. Like people don't do that and we have something that's very rare so dude I'm getting I'm emotional this morning I don't know what's going on Nikki didn't even cry and I'm still like I'm still about to lose it so man um yeah seriously I know seriously um worship was great I mean how awesome was that seriously that was good. yeah just, just give him a shout give give God a shout of praise because that's he he is good and he's faithful and um wow I'm just blown away this morning already um, anyways, I'm going to preach something, but I'm not just going to get up here and ramble all morning. So if you guys are taking notes, um, the title of my message this morning is Close the Gap. All right, we are in this series called Agreements, and uh, the, the title is Close the Gap. I'm going to be coming out of Genesis uh, 3, verses 1 through 13. Um, so, you know, if you're fo following along in your Bible or, you know, wherever, um, that's where we're coming out of. So this is um, obviously Genesis is the beginning of the Bible. It tell, tells the creation story. Okay, so this is coming um, out of chapter 3 where Adam and Eve um, been created. They're in the garden, all right, and um, we're just going to start there, okay? So it says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat from the trees of the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat, <clears throat> sorry, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for eating and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. When the eyes of both of, then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of, God, of Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God because the tr uh, among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? And the man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So we're just going to pray, and um, 
Just going to see how the Lord will use that, all right? Oh, Jesus, thank you for your word, and thank you for the lessons that it teaches us. Lord, we just pray that today as we are, we are gathered, we're hearing directly from your word, that you would just lay your spirit on our hearts, Lord. You would give us discernment. And you would just, first and foremost, use me as a mouthpiece of your word, Lord, that it would not be Scott that's speaking, that it would be you that is speaking here to all of us, and that you would do something through these words um, that would just be very very powerful this morning, Lord. And we thank you for this opportunity to gather in your name. And we thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, has anybody ever been in a long-distance relationship before? You have? A couple? How, how far away were you? Five hours. How far away were you? To Brazil? That's pretty far. I've got you beat, though. So, ha. Huh, eat that. Eat that, Hamza. I've got you beat. Um, and everybody's like, this is stupid. It's not a competition. Well, you know what? Sometimes it is, all right? Everything's a competition. I'm very competitive. Ask Shani. Pray for her. She has to deal with me on game night because I'm coming for you when we play Catan, all right? So, anyways, that literally does not matter at all, but I have you all beat, so it does, so it does matter, all right? <laughs> but if you know Shani and I and, you, and you've heard our story, um, you know that she's not from here, right? Yeah. Even if you don't know our story, but you've talked with her for a brief amount of time, um, you would know that she is from Australia, um, based on the amount of times that she says, oh, crikey, mate, or, you know, <laughs> throw another shrimp on the bobby. That's, she, <laughs> that's not a knife. This is, she thinks I'm an idiot because I have literally never heard her say any of those things. She's probably never said them in her life. Um, but, yeah, oh, oh, that's it, yeah. Um, you should see her watch the Olympics, though. She gets excited about the Australians, I'll tell you that. Um, <laughs> stupid that's so stupid um but she is even without all the catchphrases she is from the land down under all right and it's awesome because I've had the chance to go visit a few times now um and and I love it hopefully we'll go back soon because I love the the culture and I love the people and the food and the coffee will change your life all right if you ever have the chance I promise you the coffee will change your life it's so good um but I absolutely love that country and I love visiting, but one thing that I would change if I could, well, two things, get rid of Vegemite because it's disgusting, and she's going to, she's gonna, it's a joke, she's going to kill me, um, but no, the one thing that I would change is how, just how far away it is, right, um, especially four years ago when we were, you know, doing this long distance relationship, the time it takes to get there I would have done pretty much anything to change that because it was just so frustrating. Um, when you don't have your person around all the time, we don't, you know, even with, especially with that type of thing with the, the time change and everything where you have, you know, a limited amount of time during the day when you're actually even awake at the same time, it's just tough. It's very hard when there's, there's separation and there's distance there. And they say that distance makes the heart grow fonder, uh, but I'm not sure what idiot came up with that because um, that's not true, okay? Um, I don't know what he doesn't he doesn't know what he's talking about because how many of you know that distance a lot of times doesn't make the heart grow fonder but distance will um, actually create doubt and confusion a lot of times that's what happens okay distance will distort your reality and distance uh, will will actually get you to believe lies over what you know to be true okay um, now obviously we made it through our long distance dating relationship uh, because my wife is just rock solid and she's awesome um, and I give her a lot of credit for that but even in the strongest relationships like that uh, when you throw in distance and, and separation um, that they, they kind of begin to fill your head with, with some doubt right, right? Um, so this is just me being honest is it cool if I'm just vulnerable for a minute with y'all yeah. okay cool um, because there were times when we were dating that I personally did allow thoughts to creep into my head because of that distance, because of how hard it was. Um, like, what if she realizes that she doesn't want to move to America, 
right? Like, what if she meets some buff Australian dude that's like, hey, Sheila, and he's got his khaki shorts and his work boots on, and he's just ripped, and then she's like, hey, I'm not going to America, you know? That, I mean, those thoughts enter in. Or, like, if she doesn't call me when she said she would, and then I'm like, oh, what did I do? Like, oh, crap. Like, I'm, I'm in trouble now, you know, like that kind of stuff. It's, it's stupid, insecure stuff that would just start to creep in sometimes if I allowed it to, to, to make its way in. Um, now, in reality, like I said, she is rock solid. I mean, she is the most rock solid woman I've ever met in my life. Um, that's what I know to be true about Chantel Louise Funky, coolest, middle, coolest maiden name in the game, by the way. Um, but that's what I know to be true about her, right? But with some distance thrown in the mix, um, that really sets the stage for doubt and confusion to enter in. And it gets us to question the things that we are very sure of. Okay, and that relates uh, to Genesis chapter 3 so well. Uh, because God, he creates Adam and Eve and he gives them free reign over the entire Garden of Eden. Right? He, he gives them free reign over everything. Literally, there is one rule. You don't eat from that one tree or you die. And that is, that's the one rule. Everything else, I mean, other than that, it's, it's, everything's fair game, you know? He, he, it, and it's perfect. It's, it's, it's insane. Like, it is literally insane. Um, it's all perfect. It's all theirs. They have total access to everything. And they're living this perfect life in this perfect place. And then the serpent enters the story, okay? Satan shows up. And he starts to throw some lies out to Eve. All right, he starts chirping in her ear. And let's, let's, be, let's be real here, okay? That's not the problem because that's not out of the ordinary for Satan, right. right? He comes to steal, kill, and destroy everything. So that's not out of the ordinary for him. But the problem here is that Eve gives him her ear. She starts to listen. She allows some distance to grow in her heart between her and God. She allows this gap. And that's when the truth that she knows about God starts to become a little, a little cloudy. Okay? Because one of the best pieces of advice that I've ever been given by my amazing pastors is to always remember what you know is true about someone. Okay? Always remember what you know is true about someone. And I remind this to, to guys when I'm, I'm doing like, you know, helping somebody through a tough time in their relationship or their marriage. I, I, all, I, 99% of the time I will throw this out there is always remember what you know to be true about your spouse. Okay? And it doesn't have to be a spouse. It can be a, a friend, a parent, a sibling, whoever. It, it doesn't matter who it is. But always remember what you know about that person's heart and what you know to be true about them. Okay? Um, you know, when things get heated between you and your spouse, don't automatically assume the worst thing possible because you know who they are. You know their heart for you. They married you for a reason. They love you. Right? We, we, <laughs> because that's such a human thing to do is just to jump to the first conclusion in our mind is like always the worst thing. So we need to be careful of that. You know, I mean, when you feel hurt by a parent or a friend, same thing. Remember what you know to be true about them. Don't let the lies that creep in speak louder than the truth that you know about that person. Okay? When your pastors let you down, when they say something stupid, because we will, because we're, we're human, we make mistakes, we're not Jesus, all right? When your pastors let you down. You know, it's, Matt was supposed to call me back at 3 o'clock, and it's 3.07, and he doesn't care about my problems. Nothing, it, he, doesn't, he doesn't care about me at all. Are you remembering what you know to be true about Matt and about his heart? Are you remembering what you know to be true about Adrienne and her heart and how much she cares for you? Or are we allowing some untruths to creep in in those situations when we get frustrated with people for not doing what we expect them to do? Because that's the same thing that is happening with Eve here. Some untruths are creeping in. Some lies are starting to creep in. And I say creep in very intentionally, okay? Because the serpent is crafty. It says he is more crafty than any other wild animal the Lord made. He's good at what he does. And he starts off with something that is just so outrageous that it can't possibly be true. But it gets Eve's ear, okay? He says, did God really say that you can't eat from any 
tree in the garden? Did he really say that? Is that, that can't be true. And then what, what does Eve do? She gives him her ear. She responds. She's like, "What? no, that's not what he said. God said that, you know, we, we can't eat from that one tree over here, but otherwise, like, we can eat from whatever tree we want. That's fine. We just can't eat from that one or, you know, we'll die. That's fine. That's, you know, that's it. Um, so then after that, the serpent has her ear. He comes back with another lie, but this one's a little more subtle. It's a little more believable. He's like, die? What? Like, surely you're not going to die if you eat from that tree. God just doesn't want you to be on his level. He just doesn't want you to know what he knows because once you do that, you, you'll be just like God. You'll be a God. You'll know everything. The devil is crafty, man. I'm telling you, he is crafty. He knows humans. He knows that Eve has an ego. He knows that Scott has an ego. He knows that Matt has a little bit of pride. knows that people love to hear good things about themselves. He knows that people love things that, that build us up, that make us feel important, that make us feel good about ourselves. But those things ultimately create that separation from the Lord. So that's exactly what he's doing with Eve here. He touches on her ego, gives her, gives her something, you know, this, this could be you. You could be God-like. And instead of going to God, instead of actually speaking with God and just asking, is this true, Lord? Because this, this serpent is throwing out some stuff about, about this tree that's wild that doesn't line up with, with what you've told us before. It's not what I know to be true about you, but he's saying this thing. What's up with this tree? She doesn't do that, okay? Instead of doing that, Eve starts to believe this crafty serpent, and she slowly makes an agreement inside her own heart that God really has been lying to us this whole time because he's trying to hold us back. He doesn't want us to be on his level. She disregards what she knows is true about God and his heart for her, and she eats the fruit from the tree anyways. And she gives some to, to Adam, um, who, for the record, is standing right there watching her do this, okay? So by no means is this bro innocent, okay? He's not innocent at all, okay? He's standing there, and I just, I just, I imagine Adam just standing there like, I mean, yeah, if you think it's a good idea, go for it. I mean, I'll, t I'll definitely take a bite. You just take a bite first, and we'll see what happens. Um, if you... If you drop dead, then I mean, I, maybe I won't eat it, but I'll, I'll definitely eat it after you're done. Like, just go for it. Like, husbands, that right there is a whole sermon on its own, okay? Um, first biblical example of just a husband straight up dropping the ball when it comes to leadership, okay? Um, sorry for, okay, that's a si sorry for the sidebar, but that's, lead your spouse well, okay? Let's do that. But back, back to it, back to the story here, okay? So now they've both eaten from the tree, all right? And it says that their eyes are opened and they realize that they're naked. They, they understand their nakedness now when before it wasn't an issue. Because the serpent deceived them into thinking that they would be gods themselves. But instead, they went from being perfect and in a perfect place and, a, and, and sinless, living this perfect life being in sync with a perfect God to being stripped of their security and covered in shame. That's what happens there. So much so that when they hear God walking through the garden, they hide themselves because of the amount of shame that they're carrying on them. And every time I read that story, I think, how silly, how foolish. Like, you th like okay, see how that works out for you. You're, you think you're going to hide from God? That's stupid like you like you think that you can hide what you've done from the lord but we do the exact same thing all the time and think that we can get away with it all the time the promises the, that the world feeds feeds us are deception and lies and we fall for it constantly we we eat the fruit that the world is offering and then we become overwhelmed with guilt and shame and then we ourselves try to hide from the lord but what that does, the only thing that that does is that creates that separation between us. It creates a larger gap, which, again, in turn, it allows for doubt and confusion to enter in, okay? 
I cannot tell you how many times I've heard somebody say, if I was to step foot inside of a church, I'd burst into flames. Have you heard that before? I've heard plenty of people say that because that's the lie that people believe. That what I've done is too much for the Lord to forgive, is too much for him to overcome. And if I stepped into church, I, I would drop dead because I'm not good enough to be in that spot. It's crazy. Like, we don't want God to see us like that. Guess what? He already sees you. He already knows. He knows everything that you've ever done, everything you ever will do. It doesn't matter. He already knows. But the most amazing part of Jesus when he went and died on the cross and he rose back to life and he defeated death, sin, hell, the grave, is that he closed that gap for us when he did that. He defeated shame and guilt and nakedness. He defeated it all. He defeated any need for us to hide ourselves from him ever. And we're in this series, Agreements, and we're talking about the agreements that we as humans make with the world around us or the agreements that we make with our sin. You know, we're today we're talking about the agreements that Eve made with the serpent. When Jesus went to the cross, he made an agreement. He made the ultimate agreement with us. And let me tell you, that agreement that he made with us is so insanely lopsided. It's unfair. The scales are tilted so far in our favor. No sane business person on earth would ever make that deal to be on his end. Right? No, nobody would. Like, Donald Trump ain't going to be up here asking about, like, trying to make a deal for that. No way. Like, it's, it's just insane. He took the pain and the suffering and the torture and the heartbreak. He took it all. And in return, he gave us freedom and joy and eternal life with him. Like, that, that's tilted lopsided if I've ever seen it. And, the, and the, the craziest part about it is the only thing that we need to do is that we, just, we need to, t- to take him at his word, and the deal's already done. We take him at his word, and it's already completed. That deal is sealed. It's literally so simple, but we as humans just love to make things complicated and harder than, than, they, need, than they need to be. Like, it's just, that's just what humans do. We make everything more difficult. Okay, And like we talked about earlier, we, we allow the sin and the lies to work their way into our lives. And you know, we can easily forget the passion that we felt when we first believed. Like I had, that, I had that thought as I was prepping, like, man, how awesome is that feeling when you first meet Jesus? Like how on fire are you? Like you just, man, like my God is so awesome. I need to tell everybody. Everybody needs to know. Like I'll do anything for this guy. Like this is so sick. He just, he saved me. It's awesome. But then over time, we, we allow our day-to-day lives and our problems to become a greater focus than Jesus and what he's done for us. The agreement that he made for us, it's just we allow ourselves to become made greater. So the question I have today is how can we purposefully remember what we know to be true about the Lord? How can we do that? What can we do to ensure that we don't allow ourselves to pull back from God and create that gap on our end. Because let's not get it twisted. He never has created the gap. When, when there's any separation, but when we feel like there's separation between us and the Lord, that's us. He's never left us or forsaken us. That's us feeling like we're pulling away. It's always us. So how, Pastor Scott? How do we close that gap? It's pretty easy house way it's pretty easy because he's already closed it for us there's no there's no need for us to do anything except take him at his word what i want to what i want us to realize today is we can't let our relationship with jesus be a long distance relationship okay there's a reason why long distance relationships are very hard and a lot of them don't work out is because they are just difficult to communicate. We can't let our relationship with Jesus be a a long distance relationship, all right? So the goal in our personal relationship with Jesus should be this, to be so in step with the Holy Spirit that it's natural to experience the supernatural. 
Okay, we should be so in step with the Holy Spirit that it's natural for us to experience supernatural things. Okay, I don't want to feel like it's difficult to talk to my Savior. Uh, what kind of God is that? Our God is not a far off God. He, he's a God of love and relationship, and he wants to be in constant communication with us. All right, so, so in, in that same vein, when we stay prayed up, when we stay in the word, when we have our spirit built up, it's so much easier to communicate with him. We stay built up in the spirit. We will have no doubt as to what the Lord is saying to us. When he speaks to us, we'll know his voice. We'll understand it. And we'll, he'll give us, we call it discernment, as to, you know, on the other side of that coin, sometimes we hear things that might not be from the Spirit. They might be from our flesh. He gives us that discernment when we're built up in the Spirit to understand the difference in what he's telling us. All right, that, that's how, right there. And the worship team, you guys can make your way back up here. Um, but this, this is my, my charge for us as a church today, is that for, for far too long, the, the church at large, I'm not speaking about us directly, but the church at large has been so reliant on pastors and leadership as being the ones who are hearing from the Lord. Okay? For far too long, it's been enough to come into church on a Sunday morning and just check off the attendance box and then walk out the door, go about our daily lives, and leave Jesus behind that door. Like, this is the only place he can dwell. That's, that's been going on for far too long in the church at large, okay? But hearing from God was never intended for a select few who are ordained. That's, it's never been intended to be that way, all right? In John 10, 27 through 28, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. It doesn't say the pastors hear my voice and I know them. That's, it doesn't say that. It says my sheep hear my voice and I know them. Now in today's culture, I know uh, being called a sheep can be somewhat of a political insult to some people, all right? But biblically, it has a whole different meaning. So I'll, I'll, I'll be called a sheep all day long. That's fine. Back when I was in middle school, I used to go to the summer camp, and we literally sang a song called, I Just Want to Be a Sheep. Now, he knows. I, of course Evan knows. Camp kids, let's go. Um, I went to a skate camp, though, so mine was really cool. So I was, I was shredding all the time. Um, and I, I know I said I'd never sing up here again, but... I feel like I have to sing it. So this song, this song would go, I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. From my head down to my feet, my woolly little feet, I just want to be a sheep. And there was a line that was like, I don't, it was like, I don't want to be a Pharisee, because they're not fair, you see. Like, oh yeah, it was good. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now, obviously, that is a, that's a silly kid song. It's cheesy. I get it. But there's a purpose behind that song and the reason that they were using that for the kids to get that on the inside of us because his sheep will hear his voice. His sheep will hear his voice. So I'm fine being called a sheep. That's all right. I'm fine with that. Because I want us to be a church full of sheep, all right? Can you imagine what our community would look like if we were a church full of sheep that are hearing the Lord's voice? Like, can you actually imagine that? What our city would look like if we were a church full of people who not just on Sunday, but Monday through Saturday, were hearing the voice of God. We're walking around and, and, and walking out our faith and, and living out of a place of Holy Spirit direction where we are on mission because we are hearing from the Lord daily. Like, that's crazy. Because to me, 
when I think about that, when I think about a church full of sheep that are hearing from the Lord daily, that are living on mission, to me that sounds like a spiritual revival in our city and a spiritual revival in our nation. That's where it starts, as a church full of people who are hearing from the Lord daily and the Lord knows them and they have discernment and they're on mission. That's what it sounds like to me. So we're, we're gonna close out in, um, in a final song here. Um, I know that uh, I don't go quite as long as Matt. But as we close out in this final song, um, <laughs> I just, I just want to, to offer out a prayer here. Like if you don't know Jesus, Lord, right now in this moment, if there is somebody in here that has just been struggling with you, that doesn't know you, that doesn't have that relationship with you, I pray that you would just press on their spirit right now. I pray that you would press on their spirit in a way that is undeniable, that they can't stop thinking about you, they can't stop questioning what it is that, what it means to be a follower of you. And if that's you, I would just encourage you in this last song, go back and talk to Zach or Adrienne. Jesus, I just pray that you lay your spirit on them so heavy right now. And if you do know Jesus in this spot right now, you guys can stand, we'll get ready to worship. But if you do know Jesus, I just pray as, as we go through this last song here that you would just do a little self-examining, all right? That you would look for any of those areas where you might be pulling back, where you yourself might feel like you're separated from God, and you would understand and realize that's in, that's in your mind. You there's no there's no gap there. We've, he's closed the gap. There's no separation to be had there. All you have to do is remember what you know to be true about Him and take Him at His word. So let's do some self-examining here in this last moment that we're we're together today. Let's be a church full of sheep that hear directly from the Lord and know what he's saying to us. Does that sound good? All right, let, let's worship, guys. Oh, you can have it all, Lord. Every part of my world. Take this life and breathe on. This heart. heart that is now yours. Let's sing that one more time. Oh, you can have it all, Lord. Every part of my world, you can have it. Take this life and breathe on this heart that is now
Genesis uh, 3, uh, where is it? It's one of the most significant, significant verses um, that is um, one of the most groundbreaking things that have ever happened. It's ver uh, chapter 3, verse 21. And the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skin and clothed them. Let's think about that for a second because the entire gospel is expressed in that verse. Right there. Adam and Eve, they sin. They clothe themselves with something that they thought would suffice. God comes and this is the first time in history that anyone has ever seen blood. That anybody has ever seen what, what, what is inside of another creature. Can you imagine this moment? You're so filled with shame and broken. And God comes and he's something that he created, something that he loves. We might be numb to uh, blood in, in our culture and, and all that stuff. But in this moment, can you imagine being Adam and Eve and God in that moment and, and God having to take one of these innocent creatures that had nothing to do with anything that Adam and Eve ever did. And he had to take it, sacrifice it, and use it to clothe and cover up Adam and Eve's shame. In that moment, I just think about the, the absolute heartbreak that must be going through God. Because he's going through this moment with this, with this animal, and he's looking at this animal, and he's like, this is going to be my kid one day, because this animal alone is not going to suffice, and it's not going to be a solution forever. He's taking this animal, he's taking this brokenness, he's taking this situation that happened, and he's doing, he's doing what is best in the moment, but he knows that there is going to have to be someone greater. There's going to be, have to be somebody else sacrificed so that the complete solution can clothe all of us, that can clothe his kids to the absolute fullest extent. And that man is Jesus, and he has come. And I just pray that, that we would just completely accept that clothing that he has given us. Because, man, he loves you. This, 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 <laughs> these sacrifices, this is nothing small. Just, just think about God's heart in that moment when he's, he's, he has to clothe his kids. And he's thinking about his son that's going to have to be sent to completely clothe us so that we can be 
in perfect unity and relationship with him. And he's done that. I pray that we would all just take God's heart in that moment, connect with him in that moment, and just how badly he wants to be with you, how badly that he would do that so that he could clothe you, and how much it hurts in his heart if you're not allowing him to clothe and satisfy every area of your heart. If there's any area in your heart, in your life, that you feel like you have not allowed the Lord to completely cover, renew, strengthen, and just wash away with the last sacrifice of Jesus that ever needed to happen with blood. If you feel like there's something in your heart, raise your hand. That thing's got to go. Let's wash it away. Anybody, anybody else? I'm just going to close this out with a prayer. I pray that you would do a pinpoint what that thing is in your mind, in your heart. You just pray again and again. Lord, I'm giving this over to you. Lord, we just pray over um, everybody who raised their hand. Lord, I pray that you would just make it pinpoint out this thing that is, uh, that is holding on that, Lord, they have not given over to you yet. And Lord, we just pray that they would just, in absolute gratitude, be able to accept and receive the full clothing and righteousness that you have blessed them with, you have called them for. You have called them for higher things and better things than what they have been claiming for themselves. So Lord Jesus, we just ask that in every single way, in every single person, especially those bold enough to admit, man, you are free, you are bought with the highest price. You were not cheap. You are so valuable to God. And he loves you like crazy. And he has no greater way of showing you his affection than bringing you closer to himself and into the freedom that he bought for you. So accept that freedom. It's for you. It is for you. It is for you. Drop that thing. It's not for you anymore. Jesus is for you. He wants you. Accept it. Receive it. Be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Yo, let's celebrate. That's, man, that's so big. That's something so, so crazy that, like, like at, we could just pray. We could just pray now. You know, before God had to, had to do some crazy stuff <laughs> to clothe us and to make us full. And now we could just be like, you know what, God, I'm done. I'm not making an agreement anymore with anything other than who you say I am. And that is done. You can choose right in that moment. Jesus, me and you, all right, it's done. That's done. Me and you now, let's go. That is something worth screaming from the mountaintops and telling everybody about. So, happy Sunday, y'all. Um, enjoy Super Bowl Sunday. Um, I don't know if there's any news I was supposed to cover or anything. Yes? Boys and Babes crew, this Wednesday. Birthday party next Sunday. Fourth birthday of TakeOver. And that's it. So, we love you guys. Uh, be blessed. Hang out. Be somebody new. We'll see you Wednesday next week. Woo! Woo!